What's going on guys? Right on me teacher in the house and I'm back with the GPL Pickums. Long time no see. Uh, it's been a bit of a while because of scheduling stuff with one of our semi-finals. But of course, we are back with technically the penultimate GPL video because the la end of season power rankings is the only video left. But of course, I don't do Pickums alone. I am joined by Transel. How are you doing, man? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it, it's been a while, but we're finally here. All, all in good time, I guess. All in good time, of course. You can see the results from the last the semi-finals on your screen right now. Now, but we're not going to talk about them as always. But that being said, though, that means that Transel with uh, two correct results, well, score-wise, actually means he has a two-point lead on me now. Feels bad, man. But the final is all to play for because the final is a best of three, which means there is potentially three correct results that both of us can get. Assuming, of course, we even predict it's going to be a three-game series. We might even predict it's going to be a 2-0 either way. But the final is, of course, going to be Pelly, who smashed Burger uh, in the semi-finals with that GMAX Lapra set. Versus Axo, who smashed DJ with a GMAX Snorlax. So, kind of an interesting matchup. So, how do you see this turning out, Transel? So, I was talking to you about this before, but I super like Sock in this. Um... Just because of Mold Breaker and like EQ goes basically through everything, he can have knockoff for all beetle, um, and then like close combat for the, the G Max and stuff. Um, I don't know if Pelly could pull off the same kind of thing. Like it, it's super hard with like a Drag Assault. Uh, does Snorlax get body press? I'm pretty sure it does, right? It does. It's just. Super weak. I'm pretty sure it gets a different fighting move that's a lot better. Maybe. I'm just thinking a Curse Lax G Max set uh, with Body Press could actually cause issues for that Lapras as well. Because obviously Snorlax has got very good special defense. So being able to hit it on the special side is not going to be very easy, especially if it's G Maxed. So there is always the potential for um, a Body Press style set to come. Uh, I actually think it's going to be a tough series to predict anyway. I think Rabombi uh, XO used very well in the semi-finals, although his nicknaming skills were very subpar, given the fact he didn't nickname his ones at all. Um, but I do like that Scarf Rabombi set. It's a very, very strong set. Um, I could definitely even see a Specs set coming. It does actually get Psychic, which can hit the Weezing. Um, so Weezing can't really freely switch in on it, which is always nice. It does hit a hell of a lot of this team really, really hard does also get grass coverage for Lapras as well. It does get energy ball. So there's a lot of scary threats that Exo does possess. But I feel like Pelly has actually shown that even though he inherited the majority of this team and made some rather somewhat uh, obscure changes in some of our minds, he's definitely putting this team to really, really strong work. Uh, it's interesting to see Arc Assault versus Drake Assault. Uh, be interested to see if both of those come. Uh, that could be an interesting scenario happening. I do feel like Drake Assault has a better matchup than Arc Assault, though. I don't think Arc Assault has the best matchup into Exo's team. They're definitely a, a pretty annoying mons for it. Uh, but we'll have to see where the, the the actual hammer falls as to which they pick. I do think there are certain Pokemon on both teams that have very, very awkward matchups. Shedinja, I don't think, will ever come, personally. Uh, I don't think Shedinja has any real offer in this match. Uh, there's a lot of things that can hit it super effectively anyway, so Wonder Guard's going to be kind of useless. Um, yeah. Ditto, I don't really see too much room for. Um, it could be potential if Exo's running an awful lot of setup. He has run Baton Pass strats before, um, but I'm not 100% convinced he's going to run that this time. So I don't really feel like Ditto is going to offer a lot of value. Uh, I could be wrong. He, he could definitely prove me wrong, but I feel like even like a Scarfed... Um, sock where mold breaker is just gonna rip through it so <clears throat> I'm not convinced uh, it'd be interesting to see where entry hazards fall are we gonna see rocks on both sides or not um, I feel like pelly has got a harder time setting them up because of Zatu um, but I wouldn't yeah. be too surprised if there is some room to try and get it up. I could see like a web strat coming in. That Orbeetle, of course, being a web setter. Rabombi, of course, being the faster web setter, but also the more frail one. Um, I think webs are going to be more important against Pelly. Um, especially if Ditto does come. Um, hmm. 
it's an awkward one. Either way, I think, I mean, I said this to you before we started recording, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be a three-game series. Because uh, that's the other thing that we also have to factor in, is best of threes are always difficult. I've played XO in a best of three before, um, so I kind of know how he tends to like to play them. Uh, I've seen him play a few of them. I've not really seen Pelly in a best of three, though, so I'll be interested to see how he adapts to that. Yeah, sometimes you, like, try and hide moves, and maybe that can, like, cost your game. I've done that in the past, and kind of regretted it. Or XO um, against me in the ADL Little Cup Finals last time round. Um, <laughs> he gave away too much information, so I had too much for him in Game 3. Uh, so, mm. very, very different situations, of course. Um, but, at the same time, it does say a lot towards playstyle. Um, yeah. But either way, Game 1 is a guaranteed anyway in Game 2. So, how do you see the first game turning up? With no information on the table. So, I'm going EXO overall, it's just how I've been going with this, do the whole comeback trail. Um, I'll say Kelly wins the first game 3-0, so what have you got going on? I think it'll start out and we'll see some crazy strategy from Pelly and then EXO will adjust. See, I'm of the same boat of that, but I actually think EXO wins game one. I feel like mechanically, between the two of these, I feel like EXO would be able to be a safer shout. I would back EXO to beat Pelly in a best of one. Um, so I feel like, for me personally, I think if EXO doesn't reveal too much of his hand early and still wins game one, I think he's in a very good position. But I do think Exo will scrape the first game. I think it'll be more like a 2-0 as he's trying to hide some key things for game two. So I think Exo actually takes game one. So let's talk about game two then. Because this is where I think it's going to be like a call and response type situation. Where like Exo's going to show a strat in game one and win with it. But then I think Pelly will turn up with the answer for game two. And we'll figure out a way to play around it. So I actually think Pelly is gonna win game two, but I think Pelly's gonna win it 3-0. I'm just gonna go. Exo's gonna really. Sh these are these are so out there, but um, Exo is gonna win 4-0. It'd be very. It's gonna be a very tough series either way. And then of course game three now. This is where it gets interesting to me, because this would be like the perfect time of if we could actually see the battles at the time, and we see what happens in these first two games, we'd have a good idea of who could win game three based on performance. Yeah. But we haven't got that, so this is where the challenge is going to come in. It's like we're having to assume that our predictions are correct, and it's going to be 1-1 one, one into, into the third game, uh, which is what makes this very, very interesting. Uh, for me, I don't know. It's so difficult. I feel like Sock is the biggest problem for Pelly. Um, I feel like there's a lot of brick-breaking answers. There's a lot of moves that hit it very hard. Drake Assault with Bolt Beak. You know, can potentially scarf it and outspeed the Lapras. Um, stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of big threats that Exo has. It just depends on how Pelly deals with it. Um, and I think that's going to be where the hammer falls. Is going to be, can Pelly deal with the offense that Exo has? Because uh, I feel like the maxes are relatively even. Um, I feel like both players have used their maxes very well um, throughout the season. So I think that's something that we always have to consider, is the fact that their tiers are very, very strong. I feel like I would prefer Hydreigon to Jirachi, though. Um, then I Dogtrio Dracozol. If we just go down the pairs, obviously I prefer Dracozol, but Dogtrio objectively is very, very solid. Yeah, I don't really know how good... Jirachi is in this game. It doesn't... I mean, it would have to be Scarfed, in my opinion, for it to have any kind of relevance. And if it's Scarfed, it can't do its baton passing shenanigans. Um, so it's kind of an awkward situation where uh, I'm not convinced that Jirachi does come, but it's not exactly like XO isn't short of answers. Um, there's also the threats down in the lower tiers, which XO is a master of using, as he's proven this season, which is why he's here. Um... It's awkward. But like the top tiers, I think Runa Regas can always cause some problems. Uh, that thing is kind of annoying, especially yeah. if it wandering spirits the levitate off my dragon, for example. Or takes away that water it, it, absorb. 
Getting stuff rocks up is pretty huge for Lapras, Orbital, and Arctic results. So. Although Orbital typically runs heavy duty boots, so that's going to be a mm. bit of a difference there. Um, he has a few knockoff users in Serena and Sock, so we'll see how that plays um, out. I think both of us are absolutely certain that Sock comes. I think Sock mm. is just too devastating. Uh, ooh. The so thing it, I've always had with Pelly's team is there always seems to be one threat, like, we're so scared of the, the Haxorus, but it never got to do anything, because Lapras just got... Just sat in and ruined it, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if he can find a way to just make Sock useless, which we'll have to see... The problem is, it's like, if he puts all his eggs into making Sark useless, there's a Dracozole and a Snorlax sitting there that are just as powerful, you know. Even yeah. Serena at its best with a Choice Band can be nasty. Uh, Rebombi, of course, my mascot, so I'm always happy to see it in the final. But, um, very, very scary Pokemon. Uh, it's something that you always have to think about. So, I mean, I feel like Mantine doesn't do much for Exo in this particular match. I feel like that's a mod that definitely doesn't come. Um, and then it's a case of, like, what else doesn't make the cut? Jirachi, I feel like, is kind of awkward. Salazzle isn't terrible. Definitely has room to be effective, but with a Lapras, a Hydreigon, and a Dugtrio sitting on Pelly's team, I feel like it's never gonna get the best out of it. Like, it's gonna be, like, a fake-out user, and that's probably it. Um, Sub Toxic looks alright, but uh, Dugtrio is annoying, so you might have to run, like, Shed Shell, and then... And then you can't leftovers, and you so then you can't leftovers. recover because yeah. Salazzle doesn't get natural recovery, so... And he doesn't have any wish users, I don't think. No. No, I don't oh, think Jirachi... Jartu, but... Does Jirachi have oh, yeah. it? Yeah. yeah it or does, does it just yeah. have Healing Wish? I always forget. No, it has, it has Wish, and so does Zartu. So maybe something with that? Maybe that's... I feel like there's too many threats to Salazzle, though. That's where the issue for me comes in on that. Um, I do think, honestly, that I would give Exo the finals win, but I think all of these matches are close. I am going to say Exo 2 is the final game. Right. I'm going to go, it's going to be the nail biter, and Exo's going to 1-0 the final game. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be a surprise either way, um, which means that essentially we're both predicting Exo to win. Uh, that's going to be... Easy to say, but I think Exo wins overall, but we got very different paths on how to get there, so I'll be interested to see. Now, watch one of these two guys 2-0 it, and then, then we'll all look like donuts, but you know what? <laughs> It'll be funny nonetheless. But either way, of course, that's going to be our predictions. That's going to be the final pickums of the DPL Season 2. Uh, we will be back next season, of course, because uh, it's too much fun not to do these videos. So, of course, thank you, Transall, for joining me this season. It's been a blast, man. Yeah, no worries. I'll come back stronger next time. Yep, no more, um, and then pausing for two more minutes, alright? Yeah, no, I'm joking, but either way, hey. Hey, that was... Anyway. Yep. Either way, of course, thank you everyone so much for watching. We're gonna get on out of here. My name is Robombi Teacher. That's Trancel. Yeah. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay awesome. I will see you guys next season. Take care. Take care.